OK, guys, so just few thumb rules before starting. Uh, I'll take all your doubts after explanation. OK, once I'll end up my explanation, you can go ahead with your doubts. OK. I would request not anyone not to interrupt while I'm explaining. Once I'm done, you can go ahead. You can ask it. OK. That's the only thing. So let's start guys. So we'll start with the smart architecture or smart. Or you can say three tier architecture of checkpoint. So checkpoint as all of you know is a one of the next generation firewalls just like Palo Alto and Fortigate. OK, but it's working is slightly different from others. So in checkpoint you have a three tier architecture to start with. In three tier architecture what you have you have a. Smart console which is gen generally your device through which you are going to take your access of the management server or gateway and this smart console will take access of your management server and then your management server will be connected to further your gateway firewalls firewall one Firewall 2, firewall 3, and so on. These are called as gateways. What I'm trying to say over here is like in a normal conventional firewall, like for example, take ASA or take FortiGate, take Palo, okay, they may or may not require a centralized management, okay. Centralized management may or may not be required. Depending upon your infrastructure, OK, for example, in ASA you do centralized management via CSM in FortiGate. It is via Forti manager in Palo. It is via Panorama. You have a centralized device that manages all your firewalls. OK, you just log into that device. You create something on the device and you push it to your further firewalls. OK, you may require and you may not require, but the same doesn't hold true for your checkpoint. In checkpoint, you always have a management server with your management server. You need to take the access of that particular server and from the server you need to create something and then push it on your firewall. So that's how your three tier architecture is. OK, smart console is nothing but a software kind of a software. Through which you will take the server access. OK, even uh, you can like if required, you can install your management server and firewall gateways both on the same device that I'll show you when we will build the lab how to do that, but management server is required. OK, if a management server. Has multiple small management servers, then it is referred to as MDS. Multi domain servers. That is if it has multiple other management servers. Like for example, I have created a, I have used a management server. Okay, those who have worked on checkpoint must have seen this. Okay, this is a single management server. Okay, so using this management server, I am managing two clients of, let's say, uh, organization, let's say, cognizant. OK. Using this management server, I am further handling two other firewalls or two other gateways of let's say NAB, National Australian Bank. OK, two more firewalls of Citibank. 
okay two other firewalls of wipro so like that so a single management server is acting like a management server of multiple different gateways that are different from one another so that type of management server is known as multi domain server okay otherwise it is always referred as management server so using a single management server you can handle multiple gateways and you need to create anything on the management server it will push the policy further on your for the gateways okay so that's how the architecture works for your checkpoint further whenever a policy is installed there is a certain step of procedure that happens that we will discuss when we will discuss the policies separately okay that how a policy is pushed what are the steps and what are the verification methods that are used in that way okay so this is the overview okay the operating system that checkpoint use is gaia okay so we have two labs in our environment one lab is using gaia 80 81.10 and other we have one more lab that is using r81.20 so i'll give you a checkpoint evng image directly for this okay you don't need to do anything just go to your win scp server or your uh, evng server just go over there open the kmu folder and just copy paste the image which i am going to give you i'll show you the process when we will do the lab built up of checkpoint okay i'll give you that image so can, so that you can practice and i will show you the first time wizard as well that how to install the image and how to do the first time wizard setup for your checkpoint and how to install a management server and how to install your gateway okay so let's go ahead and start with our packet flow so packet flow we'll discuss in two ways first i'll discuss the low level packet flow second i'll discuss high level packet flow low level packet flow is very common okay it is very very common you can get this thing anywhere over the internet okay even in if you go for an interview someone ask you about the low level about the packet flow of a checkpoint itself you can absolutely explain this one that's perfectly fine but if you want your understanding to go to next level it is very important to go with the high level packet flow because in the high level packet flow there are multiple new like uh, new keywords that you learn and multiple new processes that you get to know okay so that you know enhances your clarity of the device let's start with the low level packet flow okay so low level packet flow starts with sam database now what exactly is sam database sam database it is a feature which makes sure that traffic will be blocked before getting processed by the firewall
Okay, this is mostly used for your in real time. This is mostly used for your malicious software, malicious IPs. Okay, in SAM database, you can define your list of malicious IPs or your malicious traffic, which you don't want your firewall to process any further. Okay, the moment your interface will receive this particular traffic, he will straight away drop that. He will not go with any further processing. The moment it is received, it will be dropped. No further processing. So the moment any traffic will hit your ingress interface of your firewall, it will first check the SAM database. OK. After SAM database, your next step is anti spoofing. Now what is anti spoofing? It checks. Integrity. of your source IP. OK. Or you can say your IPv4 header. Whatever it is, IPv4 or IPv6. Anti spoofing checks your integrity of your source IP, whether the traffic that you have received is a correct traffic or not, whether the IPs you have received are any Martian IPs or not. What is the TTL value? So all those checks are done over here. Okay. For example, let's say you have received an IP 172.259.400.1. So as you can clearly see, no octet can have such values. They are clearly invalid IPs. So these types of checks are done after SAM database and anti spoofing check. OK. Mostly anti spoofing is used on your WAN interface. OK, from where you will receive your traffic from outside. OK. After anti spoofing. Third thing we have is session lookup. OK, whatever traffic my firewall is going to receive. OK, let's say my firewall has received some traffic. OK. So whatever traffic that your firewall receives from any of the interfaces, firewall takes some tuples out of it. Those tuples are source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, protocol, and your ingress interface. OK, for example, it's like this 192.168.1.1 destination IP 8.8.8.8 source port we are 1, 2, 3, 4 destination port 53 protocol is your 17. OK, let's say this is Ethernet one. OK, so a hash value is calculated. For this and after calculating the hash value. A uh, ID is associated with that value. And that ID is known as your session ID. So uh, whenever you receive any traffic on your firewall, OK, a session ID is created for that. OK, whenever so that whenever that traffic will come for the second time, OK, it is going to be matched in the session table, whether that entry exists prior or not. If it exists prior, then it surpasses the security policy check. If entry 
exists in the session table then it surpasses security policy check it will not go it will not check your security policy whether the security policy is configured against your traffic or not if session id is created and whatever the action and whatever the state of the session is defined okay that action is taken straight away and it will go ahead okay but if there is no entry in your session table for your traffic then it will go for the further checks in case of no entry in case of no entry in your session table it will go for further checks okay what are the further checks the next check itself is your policy lookup okay in policy lookup your security policy your security policy will be matched from top to bottom approach for your traffic okay for example i have set of 100 policies security policies okay i hope everyone is aware about what is a security policy i hope if anyone is not he can say to me that someone is not aware about what is a security policy okay i'll take the silence as yes okay let's say we have 1 to 100 security policies any traffic that will come to checkpoint it will be matched against all 100 policies okay once the match is observed it will take the respective action defined in that particular policy okay let's say policy number 80th matches it okay and it says drop the traffic then the traffic will be dropped if it is saying allow the traffic the traffic will be allowed okay and that whichever number it will see or it will observe a match it will not match any further rules beyond that point okay so it will not match the policy from 81 to 100 and in case no policy match is observed okay we have a last policy of you can say your clean up rule which is nothing but your deny any any it will hit that policy and it will drop your traffic otherwise even though this rule will not be there it will also drop your traffic because no policy match is observed then what is the purpose of the clean up rule what i'm trying to say let's say my policy on join the rapper uh join the guys, guys please be on mute thank you okay what i'm trying to say if you have no matches in the 100 policy any how your traffic is going to be dropped okay then what is the purpose of the clean up rule the purpose of the clean up rule is to record the traffic is to generate log
if something will hit on a particular rule, automatically a log will be generated and you can observe that log, which traffic is coming to my firewall and what type of action is taken against that. OK, so that is the purpose of the cleanup rule. Otherwise, even if no matches are observed, then also your traffic will be dropped anyways. OK. After your policy lookup. Destination that will happen. OK, destination NAT is not a criteria to drop. OK, it will simply check whether destination NAT exists for your traffic or not. If yes, it will check for the NAT and it will perform next thing that is going to be your route lookup. Otherwise, even if destination NAT is not there, then also it is going to next step and perform route lookup. OK. The only difference is going to be if destination NAT is not there, then it will perform the route lookup of the original traffic. Otherwise, it will perform the route lookup of the NATed IP. OK, next is your source NAT. Then your layer 7 inspection will be there. Whatever your layer 7 inspection, which contains like URL filtering, antivirus, IPS, OK, all those features, they are going to be evaluated after source NAT. After that. Layer 7 inspection, it will check for VPN, whether the traffic requires any VPN encryption or not before routing it over the exit interface. Routing to exit interface. So that's how your low level packet flow works for your checkpoint. I hope you have got the basic idea of it. We'll discuss more about it in your high level packet flow of checkpoint. Uh, I have one doubt. Uh, why? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Uh, so we do a, desti a destination NAT and then a route lookup and then source NAT. So somebody once asked me in an interview, why do we do a destination NAT before source NAT? And I was not aware of that answer. So if you can help me out with it. Why exactly. destination NAT is done before source NATing? OK, mm -hmm. the reason is source NATing. If you that if you study about the high level packet flow. In the high level packet flow, you will observe that source NATing is part of exit process. Source NAT is part of exit process. It is done before exit that is when we have to exit right. the traffic okay but destination NAT is something which we require for traffic processing because after destination NAT we have to do a route lookup if we don't have a route why i have to go for the further processes as simple mm -hmm. as that. I don't have a route. I will not do any for the process. Why I have to involve my cores and my uh, layer seven engines? Why should I involve my high level engines, IPS, antivirus? What is the need of that if I don't even have the route for that particular IP? So straight away do the destination NAT, check for the route, drop it then and there itself if you don't have a route. Okay. Uh, so Mr. So Jad, this side, I have one more question about VPN. Yes. OK, so Very in nine in nine uh, ninth number of uh, you written VPN, so it is like uh, encrypting packet or de decryption. Yeah. Suppose uh, encryption. a packet is coming from a uh, site. Uh, like, let's suppose we have configured in site one and the traffic is coming from site B. So uh, the encryption encrypted packet is coming, right? So after going mm -hmm. all the process one to eight, 
uh then in ninth uh, step uh, the packet will be decrypted or no oh, it is encrypted encrypted uh decryption is done uh, i'll show you decryption over here when decryption decryption is done at the very beginning before right. session is allocated decryption right. is done at the very beginning before allocating the session okay uh, because after decryption it will perform all the basic parsing checks once again and then it will go for the secure excel after secure excel it will decide whether it has to go for the slow path fast path or your medium path then it will go for your encryption and then it will go for your routing i'll explain it after this no worries don't worry about that so in this stage in nine point uh what will happen in encryption encryption okay, encryption okay, thank you so this is what is your uh you can say your exit process okay you can say this is your exit process okay and before till route lookup this is your firewall process okay where your basic firewall checks will happen so that's how you can like compare okay i'll show you so in high level packet is, flow. is route lookup and routing different like uh, both would do the same mm. functionality how exactly to go mm. yes exactly this okay. this routing is uh, putting the traffic on the exit interface uh, okay this is putting traffic ultimately on exit interface and this route lookup is done that do i require my traffic to be processed further that why i should allocate my further cpu cores to the packet processing okay. that is the purpose of this route lookup okay okay shall we go ahead can i can i say something actually sure. i raised my hand uh, in the beginning uh, sure 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 uh, when i i was doing r80.10 uh, uh, during mm -hmm. that period nt spoofing mm -hmm. was first after that mm -hmm. same database although in google you will get same database first mm -hmm. after that following by the followed by the uh, nt spoofing uh, yeah so is it the same behavior because you said same database is first nt spoofing is the number 2 uh, mm -hmm. in practical if you do a practical right now uh, mm -hmm. if you block a ip on the nt spoofing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and block the same ip in the same database this is mm -hmm. my belief you will get the log on the nt spoofing first not on the same database is there any change in the r81.10 or 20 no I mean, absolutely i have in tested that, it many times in that way what you are talking it's no change the same database honest, is only for public so. i public ips and it was the same in r75 no no, well. no 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 actually he NT is nt spoofing should he's, fall first he is he is telling he is telling it right if you do it packet captures of that level uh, you will definitely observe nt spoofing happens first but this is the conventional way that's why we have to explain it like that you are absolutely right and even if you will go with the r8120 or 8 plus onwards you will observe the same behavior the difference that you will observe in this uh, as compared to the previous gaia os versions is with your packet processing how secure excel is behaving and how your core excel is distributing the packets so that is the major uh, difference between them otherwise it's nonetheless same this behavior which i have told you this is a conventional behavior but yes definitely as you have told if you go for it first then you will get nt spoofing first in practical and then you will get the sam database when for for interview uh, if i'm being asked, for interview uh, for please go is ahead it? please go ahead with sam database this SAM is my database. personal experience yes <laughs> this is my personal experience please go with sam database first close your eyes i know what you are thinking but please go ahead with the sam database because you don't want to you know mess up with the guy who is uh, taking your interview yeah 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 and generally when i take interview if someone says sam database mm -hmm. is first uh, yeah. i say straight away i mean mm -hmm. you you are wrong <laughs> anti spoofing is first anti spoofing is first yes if you will observe yes definitely anti spoofing will happen first definitely uh, see anti spoofing is like packet parsers okay it is like parser it is like parsing checks so definitely you will validate your traffic and then you will go ahead with the further checks 
even if you will go with the logically, but that's how checkpoint has created its official packet flow, so we can't say anything. If you have done the reassembly, even if you go with the logic, you do reassembly first, OK? As you receive your traffic in fragments, you do reassembly. After doing the reassembly, you check the integrity of your packet. And then you perform further processes, further processing. That's how it should be, and that's how checkpoint also does. OK. Are we good over here? Shall I go ahead with the next? Uh, Sumit, one more thing actually I would like to add here, like actually in the natty. OK, so if you change, you know, to the uh, client side and server side mode, so this behavior can will be also changed. OK. Mm, I didn't get you. Maybe I missed something. Uh, client side NAT, you know, in checkpoint there is an option. Okay, and server side. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they're actually yes. traffic, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I know. Mm, yes, I know. Leave it for the time being that part that we'll discuss later. You are absolutely right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm, leave it for that for the time being. Okay. That has a logic why it happens that we will definitely discuss in that. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys. Sumit. Yeah, so we just do not delete anything from the board. Uh, we'll share this snips with everyone after this session. OK, so you can just scroll it down and keep on writing. OK, and we okay, will also okay. get the recorded recorded. Uh, yeah, yeah, recordings will be provided. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK. OK, so now your doubts will clear. OK. Uh, has anyone like studied it before? Any idea about this? Like secure Excel and all those how they work? Mm, yes, I am. First, the traffic comes to the interface of the checkpoint, OK? Again, when it comes to the interface of your checkpoint, all those basic checks, the SAM database, anti spoofing, it happens over here. Once that is done, the traffic is handled by your SND. Now, what is your SND? SND stands for Secure Network. Distributor. Now, what is the purpose of SND? The purpose of SND is to allocate which specific core of your firewall. OK, allocate which specific core of your firewall. Will take. Packet. Processing. What happens in checkpoint? You have multiple cores, OK? Let's say this is your core zero. Then you have your core one. Then you have your core two. OK, core three. Up to let's say you have eight cores OK in your hardware. The two cores core zero and core one. OK. They are also known as SND cores and they are responsible for your secure Excel. Secure Excel is nothing but short form of security acceleration. OK, 
anything that is going to be processed by your first two cores will be accelerated. OK, it will not go to your rest of the cores. OK, the rest of the cores are dedicated for your. Firewall gateway. Processes. So your SND will decide which core it will send it traffic. OK, whether it requires to be sent over your secure Excel or your core zero and core one. OK, just imagine you are these two cores handling the traffic uh, majority of the traffic and your firewall cores are not getting touched in that way. You can get a very good firewalls performance. OK, you can get a very good output of firewall. So that is the purpose of your secure Excel and your SND. OK, the moment traffic is processed by the SND. It is received by SND. Then after SND, it is. It is processed against your decryption policy. Or it will simply observe whether the traffic is your decrypted traffic or not. OK, if yes, it's a decrypted traffic. It will check whether any decryption policy is there in the place or not. Decryption policy. It will process against it and it will reply it back to the your decryption engine. You can say OK uh, in checkpoint. Uh, let's say this is your firewall. OK. In checkpoint, let's say this is an ingress interface. And this is your egress interface. Your interface is divided into two parts. OK, it is generally given like for example, your input interface or your ingress interface small i capital I small o capital O. OK, where the smaller part acts like input to that particular interface and I X like output to that interface. OK, whenever a traffic is going from input interface for the further firewall processing, it goes for the I and when output interface receives something from the firewall, it receives on this part and then exit over the outside interface or your van interface or whatever it is performed by this part. So your checkpoint interfaces are divided into two parts like this. Uh, if somebody has worked on checkpoint and if you have applied your uh, FW monitors or TCP dumps, you must have observed the same as well. OK. OK, so over here if the traffic is decrypted then it is up like processed against your decryption policy and then it will come back to a decryption engine. Similarly, after decryption engine. Same thing will happen for your QoS as well. OK. After QoS again. After your QoS. I'm writing it as a small I over here because it is initially now getting into the input of your device. OK, over here it is again input towards your decryption policy, but when decryption policy will process it. Capital I because it is exiting again towards your decryption engine. The moment SND decides which core it is OK. Let's say SND decides it is going for core zero and core one, which are reserved for your secure Excel. OK, then it will first of all check whether secure Excel is disabled or not. OK, secure Excel is nothing again. I'm telling you secure Excel stands for security acceleration. OK. It will check whether your secure Excel is disabled or not. OK, if it is disabled. Then traffic will straight away go for. Slow path processing. No further checks. OK, 
that is it will be transferred to the core one and core two for the firewall course. If secure Excel is not disabled. Then it will check whether the traffic is in the secure Excel connection table or not. OK. If it is in the secure Excel, secure Excel connection table. If yes, then what happens and if no, then what happens? Secure Excel uses templates guys. OK, secure Excel. It works on templates. Now what is template? They are like your actual. Entries only OK. Just they are like your actual entries only. For example, when I'm saying secure Excel, Excel connection table, it is very similar to your firewalls own connection table. The only difference is it is going to be used by secure Excel. Secure Excel has its own connection table. OK, that is different from your firewall, but it is exactly replica of that. OK, similarly, it has like uh, connection tables. Secure Excel has connection table. It has accept template. Except again, what is accept template? Except template is very similar to your security policy. OK, it has NAT template. That is similar to your natting policy. Secure Excel doesn't perform layer 7 features. OK, any layer 7 feature or even VPN features are not performed by Secure Excel. If Secure Excel or your checkpoint firewall requires any traffic to be processed by the layer 7 engines, for example, content inspection, then the traffic goes for medium path inspections. OK, otherwise traffic will straight away exit from your fast path. Most of the firewalls you have seen there are two paths, slow path, fast path, but in checkpoint we have three slow path, medium path, fast path. OK, we'll discuss each one of them after this. If no, then again, as I told you, it checks for the accept template that whether the traffic is accepted or not. If it is accepted. If traffic is accepted, then it establishes. New connection. In its connection table after that again, same thing. As we discussed for normal flow. NAT template will be checked after NAT template. It will establish. New. Connection same thing, but with. NAT IP. NATed IP you can say OK. And if secure Excel connection table entry already is there, then it is processed that what is the state of that session? OK, what is the state of the connection? If it is reset. OK, if it is fin, if it is sin, something like that, then it is straight away. Wait, let me go further to the right. OK. If yes. Then straight away. Go for fast path processing and exit the traffic from the exit interface. OK, if no. Then over here as well and previous to that as well, it checks for. Content inspection. If content inspection is required or not, if content inspection is required. Then what happens and if not required, if content inspection is not required, then again it will go for the fast path for the further processing and if content inspection is required, then it will go for. Medium path processing. 
medium path is the path where your content inspection happens. OK, and that what is the content inside your traffic? OK, it is processed by your layer 7 engines in your medium path in your slow path. In your slow path, the basic firewall processes happens in your medium path. Content inspection happens and in your fast path, your egress process happens. OK, if I'll brief it a bit and I will if I'll give you a. Thing. I'll summarize it for you. Let's say these are your firewall kernels. OK, and this is your gateway firewall. OK. That has core 2 to 8. OK, and they have core 0 and 1. My checkpoint has received something. OK. If checkpoint has received something on its ingress interface and only the kernels are involved in the processing, then it is you can say it is your fast path processing. Or you can say your secure Excel. That means secure Excel handled it. It does didn't require any content inspection. It simply went to the exit interface or your routed exit interface. OK, and in case. Let's take blue. Something is received by your firewall. OK, it has been partially processed by your secure Excel, but it required content inspection as well. OK, that means all the processes are done by your secure Excel and then for content inspection you went to medium path. So this type of processing is known as. Medium path processing where. Everything is done by your secure Excel except your content inspection for content inspection. You have to take the support of your firewall course. If your firewall received something. On your ingress interface and it is entirely processed by your firewall. Course, then it is considered to be a slow path processing. So these are the three. Processings that we have in checkpoint. This is also known as F2F processing your firewall to firewall. OK. Let's study about them one by one. Uh, what what is this in lame lame and language? First path, medium path and slow path. I'll tell you. OK. Basically, firewalls processes are divided into three unique paths. Firewall processes. In I'm talking with regards to checkpoint. OK. When we are talking about slow path. In slow path, what firewall does firewall does basic layer 3 to layer 4 processing which involves your security policy check okay your session creation session lookup not okay route lookup again which not destination not when it involves medium path in medium path your layer 7 inspection happens OK. That is how traffic will be processed against your viruses, your IPS engines, OK, your URL filterings, all those things. OK, 
for example, I have to block certain vulnerabilities or I need to thorough check of my traffic. So all these checks are done at medium path. OK. Your content inspection, your file blockings, that what type of file I will allow, what type of uh, extensions I'll allow. So all those your layer seven features, they are checked in the medium path. Then last but not the least, we have. Fast path. Where your exit process happens. As I mentioned. Which involves your source NAT. Your encryption of the traffic. And your uh, routing. OK. Is it clear? Uh, so suppose uh, on my firewall, I'm just doing L3, L4. OK. Mm. Apart from it, source net as well. So mm. my firewall will follow slow path, then fast path. Slow path and fast path exit process. Yeah, so yes. fast path is mandatory to route the traffic out of the firewall. Yes, it? yes. That is very, uh, that is mandatory. Yes, mm. yes. OK, so in case okay. I'm doing application control, so slow path, medium path, fast path, all will follow. Yes. OK, thank you. Good. OK, so let's talk about slow path again. Whatever things we discussed in um, your secure Excel, same thing happened with slow path. The only difference is the cores will be different. That is processing the traffic. They will differ. OK, first it will check for the connection table. If connection table is there. If entry in the connection table is there, then what it will do? It will straight away go for your security policy, not security policy, your destination at. OK, otherwise if connection table is not there, it will go for your policy lookup. In the policy lookup, if it is allowed, it will go for your destination at if it is denied then packet is dropped okay after destination at what it does this destination at is again done in two ways okay first it will check for the static entries First, it will check for your static entries. What are static entries and dynamic entries that we'll cover in NATing? But destination NAT again is checked in two different steps. First, static entries. If nothing is found in static entry, then it checks for the DNAT policies. Okay. If DNAT policy after that, as I told you, route lookup now after route lookup it will not yet route lookup not route lookup yet this will just perform a route lookup okay this will not perform routing so let it be after route lookup This is a simple lookup where it will check whether it has a route or not. After that, it will check for the. Content inspection, whether content inspection is required or not. If it is required, then the traffic goes to medium path. <coughs> okay, this is your medium path. 
in the medium path, the content inspection engine now will start processing. Now, what is there in content inspection? OK, let's talk about this. In your content inspection engine, The moment the traffic enters into your content inspection engine, it is managed by a your centralized process that is known as CMI, Content Management Infrastructure. OK, any process to process communication will happen with the help of CMI. OK, the moment it will come into the content inspection for processing. First, it will be put into your passive streaming library. Where the traffic will be queued for further processing. OK, after passive streaming library. It will check for the protocol parsers. Earlier, the parsing that was done was on the validity of your layer 3 and layer 4 headers. It was not processed against your layer 7 header. So now it will check for the protocol parsers or you can say your layer 7 header will be processed whether it's correct with regards to its field. OK, and whether we can identify the application after that or not. OK, after application is identified, it again goes to CMI and it CMI will check all those against the respective engines, all those engines like antivirus, URL, HTTPS inspection, your HTTP inspection. OK, your anti spam, your IPS engine. So all those engines after getting it processed by the protocol parser, CMI sends it for the further engine checks for your content inspection. Whatever action is defined by the respective policy. OK, before defining action. Wait, before defining any action, it is put into your handler. Before. So your handler will queue the traffic again and after queuing it, it will send to your CMI. After CMI will receive it from the handler, it will. Check for the. Respective protection applied against it. OK, in checkpoint we have the multiple types of protection that will definitely cover an IPS. OK, for example, it will check for your IPS once it is inspected and then IPS has advised what inspection. OK, like whether it has advised to prevent the traffic. OK, or to detect the traffic. Or to inactive the traffic. For example, your antivirus has said to drop the traffic or to allow the traffic. So all these respective protections will be processed against or once they will be processed by your antivirus or your layer 7 engines, they will advise the same to CMI and CMI will check the reply with the respective action in the various policies and it will apply the respective action and after applying the respective action, it will send the traffic for further processing. In the further processing, the traffic is processed by VPN engines. OK. Whether VPN is there or not encryption like or encryption or your more security Excel features. More SXL features if any. OK, or your uh, tunnel related features NAT traversal. So it will be processed against those if it is configured and this thing. 
is part is not part of medium path. It is part of both medium path and fast path. OK. In medium path specifically this thing happens. OK, if I'm talking about VPN checks, then it is part of both fast path and medium path. Once it is accessed against the. Against the same then. OK, then it goes back to the content inspection engine and again it will check whether further processing is required or not. If not, definitely in our case no more processing is required. Then in that case. I think I've changed the color. Then in that case it will go for the further checks. Now after doing content inspection as I told you that any interface is divided into two parts. Now it will go for the output. Or your egress process. It will come back again to your content inspection and then your egress stage will happen. OK, which you can say is part partially part of your slow path as well as your fast path. In this case now SNAT will happen. After checking the SNAT, what will happen? It will. Decrypt. Sorry, not decrypt. It will. Encrypt the traffic if required, if decryption happened. OK, after doing the encryption, it will again check for QS. Whether any QS feature needs to be applied or not. After QS, it will exit the traffic. From the egress interface. Or you can say route the traffic from your egress interface. So this is your high level overview of your checkpoints packet flow. <sighs> Let me decrease the size so that you guys can take the snip. Let me decrease it further. Mm -hmm. OK, this is like your checkpoints packet flow, your high level packet flow. OK. If you guys want, you can take the snip of it. It has three major things slow path, medium path, fast path. One is used for basic firewall processing, and before them, we have secure Excel processing. Okay. If you want, you can take the screenshot for your future reference, but as I told you, nobody will ask you in an interview what is this exactly. Uh, most of the times you will be asked for your low level only and if you have replied with the low level uh, packet flow of checkpoint, I think it's well and good. They will definitely take you for that. Uh, someone ex uh, told me the same at the beginning of the session itself. Then when he takes an interview for checkpoint, he asked that particular thing only. Am I right? OK, it seems like it. Am I audible guys? Yes, yes you, are, you are right. Yes, you are right. Yes, you are right, sir. Mm. OK, you can take the screenshot and that is it for your. Uh, packet flow. Let me try to show you a few outputs. Though I was not planning to show. Mm, I think my 
checkpoint is not on. Yep. My gateway is down. So this is the lab that we will use for our initial practicals. OK, we have one management server. We have one firewall gateway and then we have one virtual PC that is connected with them. I I'm taking this virtual PC as well as my device as smart console. OK, I have connected my lab with my EVNG cloud. OK, using that EVNG cloud, I am taking every uh, single access for my smart console management server and my gateway. OK, so in the next session, I will help you out with the installation of this lab only uh, lab as well as licensing. Licensing is very typical in this. So what I'll do, I will share the EVNG image with you guys. Make sure you have sufficient storage because checkpoint image itself that I'm going to share it with you is of 8 GBs. So make sure you have sufficient storage and you have good resources for your lab build up. Evaluation license you can take for your checkpoint and that evaluation license is for 30 days. So definitely I'll help you out with that. How to install that and how to build this lab. OK, so next session is dedicated for that only. Let the firewall start. I need to show you how to check your secure Excel connection. That's it. After that, we will wind up the session. Uh, on, on this machine, on this laptop, uh, what is your configuration? I mean, uh, buddy, OK, OK, I, I'm using two things. I'm using this laptop as well as I'm using uh, external uh, servers and on that server I'm using ESXi server. So mostly I'm going to cover practicals using that ESXi server because on these machines you might not be able to use full features of checkpoint. For example, I, if you don't have sufficient storage, you might not be able to install the entire IPS database. So mm -hmm. I will still recommend you 32 GBs RAM. If not, then you can definitely check out with NG CloudX. They can provide you cloud labs, but they will be separately charged. Otherwise, all the basic features you can perform on this labs. Not only basic features, but many advanced features as well, but not all of them. OK. Mm -hmm. So guys so like uh, Sumit, Sumit highlighted, you know, checkpoint lab is like uh, very uh, heavy compute is needed uh, to run these uh, gateways and management servers separately. And if you want to do uh, lab recreates like uh, clustering and VSX, right? So yes. you would need a good machine. OK, so if you have a laptop with 32 GB RAM, probably when you will turn on all the machines, your laptop will crash, right? So that's why uh, we have built uh, three, four labs, one in uh, Sumit's personal laptop. Then we have another lab in our cloud uh, ESXi server where uh, multiple firewalls have been deployed to uh, cover all the lab recreates. And uh, uh, we are building another server as well, right? So it's like this is heavy, uh, you know, and computation. How, how many resources you need? Suppose I have 64 GB RAM. Can I run VSX? In 64 GB, yes, you will be it able to do it. It should be fine. It should be fine. Oh, oh. It should be fine. In 16 GB RAM, you can use only one firewall and two gateways maximum. But with the two gateways, you will not be able to use Windows PC. So either one Windows PC, one gateway, one management server or one management server, one gateway, one Windows PC in 16 GB laptop. Even with DDR5? DDR5, uh, in DDR5 you can try two gateways, one management server and one Windows PC. Maybe they'll run. More than that, I'm not sure, to be honest. It will work or not. See, uh, if you are having 16 GB machine, I would say that uh, use your single device as gateway and uh, management server, then it will work flawless, right? And if you are going to build multiple devices uh, within that particular compute, it will crash for sure. 
आपको अप ही नहीं आएगा कभी लैपटॉप क्रैश होगा या सर्वर क्रैश होगा लैपटॉप भी क्रैश हो जाता है अच्छा। <laughs> इफ भी क्रैश होएगा लैपटॉप भी क्रैश होएगा रिबूट होएगा yeah okay guys i hope you can see it okay so fw acceleration start okay through this you can see what type of uh, secure excel is available okay if secure excel will come into picture what type of traffic it can process okay over here it is there and accept template is enabled right now not template is enabled for me okay in my vm machine if you want more detailed output then use fw acceleration starts it will give you the more detailed output that what type of connections are there how many connections are processed by it okay what packets it is forwarding it to the medium path what processes it is forwarding it to the fast path so like that every single type of output also you can check it via this output there is one more command fw acceleration start mm, minus s yes mm, it didn't took fw acceleration starts minus s yep this will give you a brief output okay that how many packets are like how many what type of packets are out of the total are processed by your sxl and minus them the rest of the packets are processed by your uh, firewall scores okay apart from your snd dedicated cores so that's how also you can check your outputs so guys that is it from my end for today okay so today was about is, your uh, is this uh, secure excel like uh... Uh, a chip like uh, a sick chip uh, that will not the... you can you can not call it as offloading okay offloading is different concept a 